with the helicopter ride in. Everybody else was asleep, but it was my first helicopter ride out there, so I was in the window, you know, just excited. In 2007, Caleb Holloway flew out into the Gulf of Mexico to start his new job on the Deepwater Horizon. And then we landed on it, and it was just so clean and so nice, and it was just amazing. The rig was owned by Transocean, drilling oil wells for BP. Holloway worked as a floor hand, loading lengths of pipe down the well. In 2010, the rig exploded and sank in one of the worst environmental disasters in history. Holloway worked long hours, but he says his employer Transocean was meticulous about safety. Safety meeting after safety meeting after safety meeting. We had weekly safety meetings, we had daily safety meetings. And, and, and it's in free workplace all the time, everywhere. It all starts with planning and keeping your hands clear. A motor man. The crew even helped make a music video on hand safety. Keep them clear. The rough neck tripping on pipe. We keep them clear. The whole DWH, we keep them clear. In the video are glimpses of at least four of the 11 men who would not survive the April 20th disaster. The guys on the rig, I mean, were brothers. The friendships and the, the pranks and the, the fun, the, just everything that we had as a crew. Holloway is one of the few members of the drilling crew to survive the blowout. The Macondo well had been troublesome from the beginning. Some called it the well from hell. But BP and Transocean were behind schedule and pushing to get the job done. Holloway recalls his final moments on the deep water horizon. Around 8.30, he and his buddy were filling out paperwork on the drilling floor in the assistant driller shack when their boss radioed. Uh, he, just, he just said they needed a hand down there in the pump room. His partner took the call. And when he started card, he just stood up and he grabbed his pen and he threw it down on the desk and he said, I'll see you at 11.30, buddy. You know, that's when we knock off. And I, that, was, that was the last I got talked to him. Holloway turned to another task with fellow floor hand Daniel Barron, but when he happened to glance up at the drilling floor... I saw a start of a blowout, and I said, oh shit, and took off running. Mud gushed out of the well and poured off the drilling floor. Then it sprayed up inside the derrick. Holloway and Barron sprinted to the drilling floor, where chunks of debris crashed around them. Mud and water sprayed in all directions, soaking them from head to toe. It was just everywhere. It was blowing up so intense that it was just bouncing off of everything. Holloway had trained for emergencies, but not for this. He tried to radio his boss in the drill shack. I, I didn't get a response. I didn't, we didn't know what to do. He needed to find cover, so he followed Barron to the heavy tool house, which had a phone linked to the drill shack, but he smelled gas. Gas just, just felt it all over, all over me. I felt it, and I smelled it, tasted it, and I just knew that that was that was bad, and that's when I kind of I kind of panicked a little bit, and I looked at Daniel, and I said, "Daniel, that's gas. We have to get out of here." Gas sensors went off, but the bridge failed to activate emergency systems that might have prevented gas from spreading or igniting. They also failed to immediately sound the general alarm to start evacuation. Meanwhile, Holloway and Barron headed toward the lifeboat deck. On the way, the lights went out. Then they heard the first explosion. They kind of dug down like that and grabbed my hard hat. That explosion, and a second larger one, are believed to have centered in these engine rooms. Four men in the engine control room were caught in the blasts, but managed to survive. We get down to the lifeboat deck, and I open one of the boxes, get Daniel a life jacket, and say, get ready to get in one of the lifeboats. Holloway noticed that few of the crew had made it to the lifeboats. He climbed out and saw the door to the crew's quarters had been blown open. A group of disoriented men stumbled from a darkened hallway. He used his flashlight to guide them out. All these guys started piling out, and it was completely pitch black in there. You couldn't see anything. Towering over them, the derrick was in flames. One of his buddies crawled over the handrail to jump into the water. And he slips and fought and just loses all his grip, and he's going down. And he hits his leg on the way down, and he's tumbling. 
The friends survived the 60-foot fall and swam to safety. Holloway was one of the last to get into his lifeboat. But the fire was intense and, and it was the heat. People were worried about the dirt, you know, melting and, and falling towards the lifeboat. The lifeboat descended into an eerily calm sea. I felt like I was carried off of that rig by, you know, God's righteous right hand. A nearby supply ship became a refuge for the survivors. And I just kept going around person on person and asked them, have you seen, have you seen Shane? Have you seen Adam? Have you seen Roy? Have you seen Carl? The next morning, the survivors gathered on the deck. We had a moment of silence and I went, you know, after that was done, I had to, I had to walk walk off and then you know a couple of people came over there and you know were asking you all right you all right I said, yeah just just give me a minute just give me a minute but it really wasn't all right it, 